So this monster is the Minotaur and the hero who's been sent to deal with it is Theseus. Theseus has got a bit of help here. The Minotaur is in a labyrinth and even if he can find his way to the Minotaur and kill the Minotaur, he's still got the problem finding his way out again. Luckily, Princess Ariadne, who has fallen in love with him, has given him a thread so that he will be able to find his way out of the labyrinth. This is where the labyrinth begins, my love, she said. I must leave you here. Be quick. I want you so much. I'll uh, do my best, Theseus said. He was beginning to think that between Ariadne and the Minotaur, there wasn't a lot to choose. Then he opened the door and stepped through. It was cold on the other side. Far underneath the ground, where the sun had never shone, a damp chill hung in the air. The walls were built with huge stone blocks and every three paces away from the door, the corridor branched out in a dozen different directions. Unrolling the ball of thread, Theseus tiptoed forwards. There were no lights, but some freak property of the rock had filled the caverns with a ghostly green glow. Theseus clasped his sword more tightly and continued forward. He turned left, then right, noticing with a half smile that he was crossing his own path, for he could see the thread snaking along the ground ahead of him. Where are you? he whispered to himself. His breath formed a phosphorescent cloud in front of his mouth. The air smelt of seaweed. He shivered and went on, no longer caring which direction he took. Every passageway looked the same. Every corner he turned took him nowhere. Every archway he chose led only into another identical passage. Kicking something loose with his foot, he glanced down. A human skull rolled against the wall and lay still. He swallowed hard. The immense silence of the labyrinth seemed to bear down on him. Where are you? he said again, more loudly this time. The words scuttled down the corridors, rebounding off the walls. Where are you? Where are you? Where? Something stirred. He heard its breathing, then the scrape of feet on sand. The breathing was slow, irregular, like an animal in pain. He turned another country and found himself in an open arena, surrounded by open archways. Where this was where the sound had come from, he could see nothing. No, there it was again. He spun around. A bulky figure stood in one of the archways. It grunted. Then it moved towards him. The Minotaur was horrible. Far more horrible than he could ever have imagined. It was about the size of a man, but a large man. Its fists were clenched, its legs were slightly apart. The creature was filthy with dirt and with dried blood. A blue moss clung to one side of its body like rust. Despite the chill, sweat dripped from its shoulders, glistening onto its skin. It was human as far as the neck. Its head was that of a bull and grotesquely disproportionate to the rest of its body. So heavy was the head that its human neck was straining to support it, a pulse thudding next to its throat. Two horns carved out of its head above a pair of orange eyes. Saliva frothed around its muzzle and splashed onto the stone floor. Its teeth were not those of a bull but a lion, jutting out of its mouth and gnashing constantly as if the creature were trying to make them fit more comfortably. The whole head was covered with white hair. It carried a piece of twisted iron, holding it like a club. 